All right, guys, today I want to talk to you about big snakes, specifically reticulated pythons. And I've actually been to some of these reptile shows. You go to the show and you look at some of the vendors, what they're selling, and a lot of people are actually selling full mainland, 100% mainland blood reticulated pythons. I've seen some green anacondas, which are like the heaviest snakes in the world. And when I'm talking about big snakes, I'm talking about snakes that get 50 pounds, 100 pounds, up to 200 or even 300 pounds per individual snake. That's uh, let me tell you, if you're buying a snake, <laughs> if you're buying a reticulated python, there that's really awesome to actually have one of these gentle giants, but with a big snake comes big responsibility. And when I first bought my my two reticulated pythons, I bought them about this big. This is this is a ball python hatchling from last year and as a matter of fact, my I think my reticulated pythons were, were actually smaller than this when I bought them. And let me tell you, when you buy a snake this big, you don't realize the potential for that snake to get incredibly huge, incredibly fast. Let me tell you, you've never seen a snake grow as fast or get as big as a reticulated python, especially if you have mainland blood reticulated pythons. So that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. <laughs> reticulated pythons are a really big responsibility. So as a breeder of snakes, I have a lot of racks and in a lot of racks, I have a lot of tubs. And really, if you're getting a small, hatchling reticulated python what you really need to do is put him in some kind of a setup like this when he's smaller and let me tell you a reticulated python will outgrow this enclosure really fast and then you want to move up to something like this and this is kind of uh, for ball pythons this is kind of the grow out tub right here and this is what I keep my grow outs from last year they're getting a little bit bigger but a reticulated python can reach that size in an incredible amount of time let me tell you yeah, they grow so fast and then from there you move them into like a tub like this this is like a 70 series tub I actually still have to go through and check all my females some of my female ball pythons may actually be laying eggs so twice a day I go through and check them all that's that's something I still need to do but I actually started with my ball python with my reticulated pythons in 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 some of these and I moved them from tub to tub and in no time at all I moved them up in into a, a tub like this. And I'm fortunate that I can actually go from one tub to another, to another, to something like this. And then what I did within, I'd say maybe a year and a half, I moved them up into a big boa tub. And let me tell you, these boa tubs are fairly expensive. <laughs> I think I paid about $650 a level for these bow tubs and 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 actually for this one this is one of my reticulated pythons this is sunny and he's part super dwarf so so more than likely he won't actually outgrow this boa tub which is really awesome so if you're thinking about getting into reticulated pythons i would highly recommend getting into the super dwarf and the dwarf but my other female reticulated pythons 50 percent jampea dwarf and she actually totally outgrew this tub and it actually I could fit her into this tub but she wasn't very comfortable and what happened was is she started pushing on the on the on the sides of the tub and messed up her mouth really bad and she was getting a really swollen mouth and a respiratory infection she was wheezing and and coughing and, and I actually thought she was gonna die she was so bad it was really really bad and then I moved her into her own enclosure and she's actually outside in a different enclosure and I actually have two more boa tubs down here that are unused and I'm thinking about maybe holding back some two of the hatchlings I'm thinking about maybe uh, a male and a female which would be really awesome because then I could breed those together and get some super dwarf mixed in with some purple and lavender and white albinos which would be pretty cool so I made a video I'd say about a month ago and, and I actually pulled Sonny out of the tub that's my male he's he's probably weighs about 30 pounds and I was handling him and I had one comment under my video and the comment was you don't really seem that comfortable handling that big snake and let me tell you I I'm not really comfortable with Sonny when he was small someone actually tried to cheat the system 
system. And instead of going from a small tub to a medium tub to a big tub and a bigger tub and then a boa tub and then an enclosure, you know, you go through all these tubs and it gets really expensive trying to buy tub after tub, bigger and bigger enclosure. That's probably one of the biggest things that really, that you really struggle with because, you know, you invest like $600 in a boa tub and then a year, year and a half later, all of a sudden, you know, your snake outgrows this boa tub and then what are you going to do with the tub and then where are you going to come up with the money to buy another enclosure and that enclosure actually cost a thousand dollars and some people can get, you know, pretty creative and build their own enclosures but I opted to actually buy kind of a, a pre-manufactured enclosure but I'd say chasing the enclosure size, I'd say that's one of the biggest challenges of a reticulated python. They grow incredibly fast. You won't believe how fast a reticulated articulated python can grow it's pretty incredible and uh, i would say probably the other thing is 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 they really require quite a bit of food compared to ball pythons so you feed a big snake and i'd say within two or three days that big lump from the rat it completely disappears and that snake looks super skinny again it's almost like like you've been starving that snake for a month and then you feed it again and it has a big lump and you think okay Okay, it's good for a week or two no it's like it's like a couple days later that lump is gone that snake's going crazy for another rat and it's super skinny you wouldn't believe the metabolism of a reticulated python that's the other thing is how much they eat how fast they grow and you're chasing the tubs getting into bigger and bigger sizes and actually when I bought uh, Sunny I bought him from an individual on Craigslist and it was kind of interesting he bought it from a breeder had the, the paper Paperwork and he paid, I think it was uh, like $1,100 for that snake, and and I got it for a significant discount. It was when I got that snake, it was incredibly aggressive. That's the thing. It's it's and then the guy tried to cheat the system, and what he did is he actually bought one of these big enclosures, put this little tiny snake in a really big enclosure, so it didn't feel confident it didn't feel comfortable because it was really wide open and you'd reach into the enclosure and that snake I mean that snake would like just take bites at you it's like just a crazy wild snake and when I picked that snake up it was just going crazy and peeing and musking and trying to bite me and let me tell you that's that's one of the most frightening snakes that I had ever purchased and that's probably why that snake was really cheap and let me tell you when that snake started getting bigger it was still aggressive and that's why I'm not really comfortable with with Sonny because because of our history and where he started from he was an extremely aggressive snake as a matter of fact when I bought him he was stuck in a really bad shed and it's it's you know I pick him up and I'm like all right is he gonna bite me is he gonna snap at me and as a matter of fact I handled him like three sessions ago my third session uh, third handling session from this last one and he actually peed and musked on me so he's, he's still got a little fear and hesitation over me you know and I can pick him up and, and <laughs> it seems like you know you, you see people pick up snakes and they know the snake and they're comfortable with the snake and the snake is comfortable with the person and you can do anything with that snake and, and you could tell it's 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 kind of a comfort level based on the knowledge of the snake the the individual snake's personality and you pick up a snake like this where you have kind of a <laughs> hesitation a, a kind of a bad history with the snake and let me tell you it can be pretty frightening because you don't really know what that snake is going to do so what i'm going to do from here is i'm going to feed lucy a couple rats and <laughs> she's been going crazy so both of these guys just shut out i've been pairing them up trying to breed them trying to get a clutch of eggs this year this is i think the fourth time then I'm going to try to pair them up. So I actually had one ball python lay my very first clutch of eggs. So it's right at the beginning of the breeding season. I'm going to try to feed Lucy a few more rats. And then I'm going to pair them up one last time. And if they don't go, I'll wait until next year. So let's check that out. All right, so I have a rat freshly prepared for this boy. Let's see if he'll actually take a rat. He's been fasting for about six months. And he's crawling around a little bit. We'll see if he'll actually take this rat. And if not, we'll give it to Lucy. Uh, <laughs> he's still on a fast. Uh, he's thinking about it, thinking about it. Maybe. Some guy, sometimes this guy is totally unpredictable. 
and he will lunge out and grab it. Sometimes he really freaks me out when he jumps and grabs that rat. But uh, looks like he is just kind of crawling around, not really interested in the rat. So there you have it, still on a fast. I think he's going on about seven months. It's pretty incredible. All right, guys, so I think Lucy is ready for another rat. I thought she was in breeding mode. I didn't think she'd take another rat, but it looks like she'll actually take one. So I am actually preparing one, getting it all ready, and we'll see if she'll actually take it. All right, so if you're wondering how I prepare the rats, I euthanize them with CO2, and I have some a really big, huge breeder. Let me, sh let me throw it in there, see if she'll take it. Oh yeah. She took that without hesitation. I thought for sure she stopped feeding. I thought she was in the breeding mode, but it looks like she's still taking a few rats. So I'm I'm kind of debating whether or not to pair her up again. It's really I don't know. I, my ball pythons laid their first clutch of eggs. So it's it's kind of it's kind of hit and miss. I think I might feed her if she'll take a few more rats and then pair up one last time for the year and then call it good if she doesn't eat and then just wait for it next year. Okay, so this is Lucy. I'm gonna give her her third rat. This is the rat that Sunny didn't eat, and she's definitely keyed in. She was following my hand back and forth when I unlocked the enclosure. She's definitely gonna take it. Let's check this out. <laughs> That's interesting. Hmm. Sometimes he's he gets a little lost sometimes. <sighs> <laughs> I know she'll eventually take that rat. Sometimes she's just a little slow. I'm surprised she's actually this slow on her third rat. Cause the second one she took really well. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I'm thinking she's going more into the breeding season. Typically she would really pound those rats really fast. She would grab them and coil and, and really pound them down. She's... Kind of acting kind of weird right now. <laughs> I don't know what she's going to do. Um, I'm thinking she'll probably eat that rat. Uh, I might have to give it a few minutes and come back in a little bit and see if she actually eats it. She's definitely interested. I'm surprised she was pacing my hand back and forth. Uh, pacing after my hand and oh, there she goes. <laughs> She's so gentle sometimes. Sometimes she's she's just crazy for those rats. She's pretty pretty incredible. I really wanted to get in there with my little watering can and add a little more humidity to to make the coconut husk kind of it kind of forms it into a mat so it's not kind of uh, fluffing up because because if it fluffs up like that sometimes she can get a little bit of coconut husk in her mouth which I don't think is very good when she's feeding and I was actually gonna go in there and water it down and that's when she was going back and forth after my hand going a little crazy trying to get my hand so so I'm thinking she's still on food so she has quite a ways to go probably before she lays eggs. Typically they'll go off of food, you know, like a month or two at least before they lay their clutch of eggs. So it's kind of interesting. <laughs> and she is, 
She is really interesting when she eats her rats. I was actually thinking of pairing them up today and I was going to water the substrate down and then pair them up one last time thinking that they were actually going to breed uh, one more time. I, I really can't tell. Uh, it looks like she's developing eggs but I thought I'd throw the male in one more time and if, if she's on feed I definitely don't want to throw the male in there until she gets a few more rats in her because the more rats you can put into her especially during the breeding season the more likely she'll actually lay eggs and I'm really looking forward to, <laughs> to having a clutch of eggs from this girl. So take a look at this crazy steak. <laughs> she was just going crazy, like biting at the air. <laughs> look at that. She's going crazy. She's definitely, definitely looking like she could take another rat. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give her one more rat <laughs> and see if she actually takes it. All right, so this girl is getting fired up in a feeding frenzy. She was snapping in the midair when I came up earlier. Let's see what she does to this last rat. This one's huge. Oh! <laughs> oh, she's like, ooh, she's like drooling over it. <laughs> that is wild. I've never seen her get so crazy. Woo! That always gives me a little, that always gives me a little. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get bit on that one. Sometimes she just goes crazy over those rats. She gets, the first couple are really slow, and then when she gets in a feeding frenzy, she gets really fired up. <laughs> she just starts lunging at those rats. Oh, that is crazy. I've never seen a snake drool so much. I don't know if you caught all that liquid coming out of her mouth, but she's like drooling over those rats. That is just crazy. And those rats are so big, they're like almost like groundhogs. <laughs> they're huge. Those are my retired male breeders. I have, um, I probably have another, I'd say another dozen of those rats. Wow. She's got a big mouth. Whew. That was crazy. <laughs> All right, so that is Lucy eating a few rats, and, and I think you know usually she she can actually eat ten of those jumbo rats back to back to back, and especially gearing up for the breeding season. And now she's definitely slowing down. It looks like I may get a clutch of eggs. I did an ultrasound a couple weeks ago, and it's looking pretty good. And she had some little follicles. I think I'm gonna pair up one more time, and then after that, I'll probably do a final ultrasound. We'll take a look at her. See See what the immature eggs look like see if she's gonna actually lay a clutch of eggs the other thing if she doesn't lay this year this is uh, this is the second year that I've been pairing them up she didn't go last year and I was pairing them up the, the one thing that's kind of nagging at me in the back of my mind is my male I never actually determined for sure 100 percent sure if it's actually a male or a female and i know lucy is a female because she definitely has the the immature eggs you can see the follicles in her i never really popped her hemipenes and i think when a snake is really big it's really difficult to figure out you know how to how to probe them or pop the hemipenes i should have done it when they are much smaller when they are easier to handle so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you next time